stopping by. It's time to learn with our friend Clive. So grab your brush, have a great time. And don't forget to click subscribe. Hello, my name is Clive and welcome to the studio for another collaboration. Yes, this is Larry Hamilton's challenge to me and to Jason and to Brandon, as you can see. Um, so, when I first received this one, as you can see, um, it was a little bit, I don't know, the, the, the one thing that came to my mind was a particular artist rather than the actual scene itself. Um, looking at the picture... It was quite dull, quite grey, quite um, gloomy, and it's it's the oldest schoolhouse. Yes, the oldest schoolhouse in the USA, I believe. Now, saying that, um, I can imagine those days. Um, those days were like dark and gloomy, and you know. So I, I had a particular artist to come to my mind, and that was L.S. Lowry, and as you can see by there. That's one of uh, uh, Lowry's actual paintings. So I'm taking the liberty of just quickly roughing out um, a sketch of the building. It's a little bit bigger than I thought it was going to be. But um, I, I'm just going to go in on this. I'm not using very many colours. Um, all I've got on my palette is a little bit of Prussian blue, some cadmium red, um, some burnt umber, some Mars black and white. That's it. That's all I'm going to use. I, I want to I make this very similar to how I think Lowry might have approached it and I might even put a few figures in here and there um, it's called artistic license Larry <laughs> Larry said use artistic license Clive so I thought I would so um, yes a bit unconventional today it really is so um, what I thought I would do is I got a bit of sponge there we are look a bit of household sponge this is a sponge that you can use to wash car I've cut it in half and I've just sectioned it off into little triangular bits like this. And I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing today. I've got no plan. All I know is that um, I want to do a, some sort of a, a, a Lowry type thing. So I've just moistened that down. And I'm just picking up a little bit of the burnt ember. And I'm going to put a bit of white to it. And I'm going to put a bit of black to it. And I want to make that grey type of thing because you look at the background of a Lowry paint and, and this particular one um, it's, um, it's, it's 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 industrial is the word so I, I wanted to put that type of feeling into my painting so I, I just want to make it look really like a Lowry basically That's, this is what I thought I would do. I don't know how this is going to work and I'm just going to just go in very roughly with with a sponge like that. It doesn't matter if I go over my line work. That's the reason I I went in like that. And I'm just going to... I'm using a 16 by 16 canvas palmer board. Um, I'm looking at the sky. I'm going to go into a little bit more burnt ember. And I'm just going to put in maybe a an essence of a tree or something. He's got buildings in there, and it could be workhouses. I don't know. It could be something like that. It could, it could be anything really, couldn't it? It could be a factory or something. I'm just putting in what I think could be you. I might, I might put a tree, a tree or something, just a, an essence of a tree, just possibly there. And this is what I see. Um, this is what I see this this place as. It's not as in the setting it's in. It's in the setting, and I think it could possibly have been. So um, we've got um, a Welsh fort, a, a folk club. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> My teeth are loose, Larry. We've got a Welsh folk museum, which I will try and take you through one day. And um, we've got buildings in there and, and all this type of things, like thatch cottages and, and schoolhouses, funny enough. And let's just get a bit of that down there like that. Let's put a bit of red in that. Let's get a bit of red into it. There we are. Maybe not as much as that, but it doesn't matter. I'm only using limited colours, so I've got to be careful what I'm doing here. If I put white in that now, it's going to go pink, and I don't want to do that. So what we'll do... I'll just let that dry off. There we go. 
and put that sponge in the water. Yeah, so we, we got like a Welsh folk art museum and only and got buildings and stuff like that. I'm going to grab a brush now. Um, so let's get a bit of this burned umber, a bit of white. Let's get that white. Let's get it right down like that. And it's just maybe a bit darker than that. A bit, a bit of black to it, I think. Make a make a brown black. I want this to look grey. I'll do. <laughs> make it up as you go along, Clive. Yes, it looks as if you know what you're doing. <laughs> so, I don't know. I'm just having fun today. And I really don't mind how this turns out in, in actual fact. So, I'm not going to put a lot of detail into this. Because you can look at Lowry's, um, he didn't use a lot of detail. He painted a matchstick men and matchstick cats and dogs. He painted kids on the street and they were clad in clogs. Yes, clogs are wooden things that you put on the bottom of your feet. You will see them. I gotta, I'm looking at the wrong painting. You will see them in Holland. Yes, but they did have them in uh, Lincolnshire, I think he was. He lived, I think he was. Stratford. I think that's the place it was. Yes, I think I'm sure it was Stratford. I might be wrong, but I'm sure it was. Well, we'll talk a little bit more about Lowry. Whoops, too much paint on the brush. We'll talk a little bit more about Lowry as we progress through this painting. So we've just put a little bit of shadow in there, taking the excess off my brush and just merging that in like that. And now we've got the light that way. <laughs> I just make it up as I go along. I don't mind. This is a, this is these 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 are about testing skills and, and testing your your artistic license. And I and I like to study different artists. I really do. And let's put a the chimney there. This was a schoolhouse and. It is, it, as you know, because I just said, it's the oldest schoolhouse. I'm not sure if it was in America or whatever. I can't remember off the top of my head. And um, the uh, schoolmaster and his wife used to live upstairs. Yes, and that was the actual schoolhouse itself. The, a little bit of um, research that I did there. And um, I thought that was quite useful to know. I keep looking at the wrong painting. Because I'm trying to see what Lowry was done, has done. But I'm also trying to... Um, keep within the boundaries of this particular lesson as well. So that's going to be quite dark in there, isn't it? So let's mix a bit of brown with that. I'm going to bring a touch of blue to it, just a touch, just to cool that colour off a bit there. Yeah, there you go. Maybe a little bit darker than that. I'm only using limited colours. I want I want this to look bleh. <laughs> I want it to look like that. And it'll all come together. He hopes. And I'm not too worried about accuracy neither, because if you look at a Lowry painting, it's it's not all about accuracy. It's it's just about observation. And it doesn't matter about the boundaries of making sure everything is one hundred percent accurate or close to the eye or it, 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 this exercise is not about it's not about that as he says as he makes the building slightly bigger <laughs> but I don't mind it's not about that the, 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 this is more about observation what you see and, and I'm sure if if Lowry was standing or sitting or whatever he did however he painted I don't know um, by this schoolhouse then he would be observing more uh, and painting what he sees rather than going for accuracy. That's 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 what I was thinking, or around the lines of doing. So um, there you go. And that's my excuse. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> so uh, I was I I I've seen actually seen Brandon's um, painting, and he's done a wonderful job um, up until the point of filming this. Brandon's the only one that's actually done something. Um, Larry, um, and, and I, I hope you all wish me uh, wish Larry well because he's had trouble with his eyes and he's had a little operation on cataracts and um, 
and I know how how hard that is for somebody that loves painting and you know when your your eyes or your hands anything concerning those two things then obviously as an artist it gets a bit frustrating so I hope you all wish Larry well with myself and um, so as I was saying I was I was watching Brandon's video the other day and um, I was quite inspired and he said that it's, it's, it's important that you make sure that you get the building accurate and because you can't you, you'll be going to spend the rest of your time during the painting um, trying to correct things and I totally agree with him I totally 100% agree with him you can't you can't disagree with somebody that is as talented as Brandon but what this type of painting is is not so much about that part of 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 making sure everything is accurate it, this is more as again I, I keep reiterating um, and going over what I've just said this is this is more about the um, the observation rather than the painting so in 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 this respect it's not about crisp lines and accurate and perspectives and and again please I, I, I encourage you to go and um, and check Lowry's paintings out because um, you'll see exactly what I mean then um, as far as that's concerned let's put a little line there and I'm going to put a little line across a shadow line there I'm not worried again as I said about too much perfect detail in this I'm washing that out and um, use use um, use sponges and things and, and, and all that type of stuff it's important that you do that it's important that you you use it all these different sponges and things because you don't know effect wise what you'll be capable of if you don't these these things are are, are really good for um, practice as well I think I think they are yes I might be wrong I don't know in play studio we don't worry about things like that we certainly don't okay now what I want to do now is going to block out this building I can just about see it because it's tucked behind my um, panel by there so I'm gonna go maybe a little bit a little bit lighter and let's put a little bit of black to it I'm gonna gray this off a bit yeah, it's a little bit lighter just to make that stand away from the dark bit because it's going to be picking up a little bit of light that's in deep shadow this is in like half light maybe I don't know perhaps it is perhaps it isn't I don't really mind Now I imagine that this is all going to be dirt and and and, and it's just going to be mud, isn't it? They didn't have paving stones and things like that um, in these days when this actual building was used. I don't think. So I'm looking for contrast. I'm looking for tones, values. That's that's what I'm looking for. And this is just must be like a tool shed or something. So let's just drag down a couple of indi I I indications of planks or something there. There we are. Picking up a bit more darker that colour. Darken that colour up a bit more. That's going to be dark in there because of the shadow. Don't be afraid to use your fingers. A branch or two maybe. Oh, 
tree or whatever. You know, just just make that tree up a bit there, yeah. Put it whatever there. <coughs> okay. I don't know. Let's get a I not really know I don't really know what brushes I'm gonna use. Um let's get a, I got another short flat here, I'm just moistening that. I gotta decide now. Um on this barn, um, side of the uh, side of the um, schoolhouse. Sorry, just thinking. The brain, the brain goes sometimes, and there's my little Mori. She barking tonight again. quite loose this is um, even though this is just getting rid of the white and I'm and, and blocking out there's not going to be a lot of detail in this this is not going to be the focal point of the painting it really is not I got a focal point coming in um, which I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of again on, on, on a Lowry theme so I'm just going to paint I'm going to block that out as I block that out I want to talk a little bit about Lowry so um, Lawrence um, Stephen Lowry I think was his his, his full name and um, he was born in uh, the 1st of November in 1887 that's a long time ago isn't it and um he died in 1976. He did. I was still in school then. I think it was the 23rd of February 1976 he passed away. Obviously uh, an English um, born and bred artist. And um, many of his drawings and paintings um, were done in um, Lancashire. Lancashire. Lancaster. Lancaster, Lancashire, 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 I think it was. Yes, up there somewhere anyway. And he worked and um, there for well over forty years, I think. So all his all his paintings and drawings were were done around that area and uh, quite industrial there at the time as well. Salford. Um, and surrounding areas as well and that's where the song is about matchstick men, matchstick cats and dogs which I will not be singing later on but I might read you the lyrics yes and uh, I can remember um, I can remember watching Top of the Pops and um, which is a like a radio program then with all the local um, current artists of the day were were featured on on there. Um, this door needs to be a bit lighter. And he's best known for this type of thing, which is urban scenes, um, a matchstick men, matchstick cats and dogs, where he didn't really worry too much about what he was just depicting the scene of the time, which is. Um, which is what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying. <laughs> My wife would say I was very trying. But there's um, there's there's loads of his his, his works uh, hanging up around the world, and um, let's just darken that up a touch. Antique gallery and things like that. So as you can see, I'm being trying to be as as loose as as, as I as I can with these strokes. These are just shutters, and I'm not too worried about being careful about size and proportion and and just giving you a feel that there's. 
shutters there. We got a dark area down along that door there. And we got a bit of dark coming down there like that. A little bit of a shadow. A little bit of a shadow. Just going across that door there. There we are. I'll do it for now. I'm not expecting miracles from this painting at all. Let's put a bit more light into that. Rooftop there. And then um, I'm going to get a little bit of white just on a sponge. I'm just going to put a little bit of this neat titanium white just to represent maybe clouds or something. Yeah, like that. Chuck that in the pot. And I'm going to dry that off with a hairdryer. Okay, so what I've got here is one of these little, like plastic cards. There we are. It's a little. It's it's a, it's a little. Well, this is just a lottery ticket card which you put your numbers on, but you could use a credit card, anything like that. What I thought I'd do is try something different. I'm gonna I'm gonna get um, I'm gonna get another bit of sponge. I'm gonna put some black onto my sponge there, and then I'm gonna just tap it across an edge. Now I found that's the best way of loading this up. <laughs> I've never tried this before, <laughs> but let's try. Let's try. Maybe a bit more. Let's put a bit more on. I don't want to put too much on, do we? No. I just want to. Not left handed. Well, that doesn't work very well. Doesn't matter. Let's um let's go that way now. Okay, I'm not, I'm not happy with that. Chuck it in the bin, Clive. Chuck it in the bin, Clive. I, I, I don't want it to look... Um, I don't want it to look... I'm going to skip by in there somewhere. I don't want it to look... I want it to look as if I'm just, just using what, what i got to hand. I want to I wanna get these... I don't want it too formal. That's what I'm looking for, is just... An indication of slats or whatever they call them, um, shingles. I think these would be wooden shingles, and they're a lot smaller than that. But it doesn't matter. It, this is just something any every every everybody could. Can really go and try this? It really it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's if it's even if it, it starts to look childlike. It, 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 it's it's not about the painting being a, a, a masterpiece work of art it, this is more about process of learning and 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 thinking um, in the eyes of an artist and Lowry was great to just set up his canvas in the streets of Salford and just sketch and paint roughly and this is the type of thing you could do if you were outside and all you wanted to do is just get a quick idea quick sketch roughly rough a rough a rough sketch of of something and this is all we're looking to do here today and that's a window it is actually there 
So let's get that, let's put this window in place. Let's put this window in place. And it's, it's a wooden, wooden frame. So we need to, we need to go into this little grey mix. I'm using a strip lining brush. And we got one, so we got one, two, and then we got just going across very quickly like that. See, it's it's quite effective, isn't it? You know, you can you can make this look really rustic, and that's that's the effect I'm trying to get is that. I don't want accuracy. I want it rough. I want it. I want it to be just a kick and rush. is what we used to call it. Just a kick and rush painting. I used to go out and just just a kick and rush painting. But just a little bit of a little bit of detail here and there, just to. Just darken that area up. Again, brown. Don't forget, I'm using a limited palette of Prussian blue, burnt umber, black, white, and a little bit of red. That's all I'm doing. So I'm very limited to what I can accomplish here, and I wanted to do it that way because I wanted to challenge myself as well. But I wanted to get some sort of representational thing and this as I said this is not going to be the main feature I'm, 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 I'm quite um, I'm quite aware that this is rough and ready and that's what I wanted nice rough and ready type of painting so I'm just bending a little bit that looks like a flower pot or something. I'm spending a little bit of time now just on a, a little bit of brushwork. Looks more like a flower pot now. Yes, that's cool. Okay, so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to get my sponge. I'm rinsing my sponge out. And I go back into this burned ember and white. What a lovely colour burnt umber and white is. I don't want to go too light too quick. And I'm just going to go... It's a bit too dark. Let's go a little bit lighter. It doesn't matter if I go lighter lighter. Because there's something that's going to happen to this later. get a little bit of black on my brush and just throw in a little bit of grey into that and then picking up a bit of burnt umber now and putting a bit of that in as well and just play around with shapes oops play around with the shapes get dirty get your hands dirty it doesn't matter Get your hands dirty. I hate all the time. I, I say I said the same students before. I've said, don't worry about getting your hands dirty. It doesn't matter. It's not a problem. Not a problem at all. Let's put a little bit of foliage or something there like that. I'll just drag that across. Let's put a bit of. All those colours now, you've got the black and you've got the white and you've got a little bit of that burnt ember coming in and we can make this look like as if it's mud. There you go. I 
Get a little bit of black. Let's get a little bit of. Contrast in there like that. What are we looking? It's come in pretty good so far. I'm quite happy with that. And um, for what it is, it's okay. Now, where's that script lining brush? What we've got to do now is we've got to put these boards in again. And I'm going to go into that little bit of black and burnt ember mix. And I'm just going to very quickly um, I'll tell you what we could do. We could do it this way. Could we do it that way? Could we? Um, I don't know. <laughs> No, we'll just do it by hand, I think. Let's put that there and let's do it this way. I, I don't want to... These boards have got to come across, so let's, let's just... Lifting the brush off a bit. Broken lines. Broken lines. There's nothing worse... There's nothing worse than, this, than, than if I did this, but like I've done there, look, if I've gone straight across there. Now, because I've done that because it's a shadow, but there's nothing worse than straight lines. So if, if, if you can break a line, it'll look a little bit more, if you break the line, it'll look a little bit more realistic and your eye prefers a broken line anyway. Because it gives your eye, eye something to work on. So it's, it's good to have a broken lines. Very lightly going down or up. Doesn't matter. Lines go in both directions. So there you go. Lines go in both directions, they certainly do. Thinking of these planks. Don't we worry about how many planks you've got on you. Don't worry about that. All we want to do is give a representation that this is actually uh, an oak panelled schoolhouse. There you go. A bit of water. Because if you look at that, you can see the, the lines with these planks. They're quite... Visual, isn't it? It's visual. What's the word I'm looking? Not visual, Clive. It's um, we stand out. That's what I was looking to say. I don't know. Sometimes I don't know what I'm talking about myself. So half the time, let's just put a. Door frame. Oh, I emphasize that door frame there. Nice and rough. Sharp lines where they're needed. Sharp lines where they're needed. There you go. Now we need to add a little bit of white to that. And let's put these. Pings of glass in. There you go. Let's use the same colour now for these pings. just to maybe a little bit of, maybe a touch of white to that I just want to make them stand out a bit more don't forget acrylics 
I do try like the dog. <laughs> dog lighter. Da -de -da. I don't know. But Brandon and uh, Larry and Jason are going, What are you doing now, Clive? What are you doing now? I'm just having fun. Guys, I really am. This is about, this is a challenge, this is a challenge and a half, and it's all about having fun, it really is. Let's put a little bit of light into that chimney there like that. And I'm going to use that light colour, and I'm going to go across the top It's not light enough. A bit of water. You need a bit of water on this to make it make this flow. There you go. Let's just get a little bit of Get a little bit of light on that. I want that just to look as if it's just catching a little bit of light there yeah, like that. Let's go back into our, our black mix now and let's continue with these, these boards. That. When we're looking, it's not looking too bad. I'm not the, not the best of buildings and stuff and I haven't tried to avoid green as much as I possibly can here. Yeah. I don't want to do green today. I looked at this and I thought, yay, no green. And I knew this is going to be something I could just play with. I really do it. Okay. Let's get this filbert brush now. And now I want to lighten up this area here. In something, let's just get a little bit of colour in there. I'll darken our edge off there a bit. I don't know, we can sort that out in a minute. Let's get this. That is actually on a, on, a, on a really good angle there, isn't it? If you look at the side of that building, if you look at the edge of that building, it's actually coming out. It's not. It's not straight. It's actually. It's actually coming out like that. A bit of dark in there. Let's just get this. Shadow it up. What I want to do now is increase the lightness on on there a little bit and there we got a distinct 
light area underneath there where you would think there was a, um, a shadow area and then I've got to be careful because I'm painting on an angle again there's a de definite light area there Try that a little bit. I want to get a bit. Want to get a definite. Shadow coming down. This is what Laura used to do. He could use his fingers and everything as well. So don't ever be afraid of that. Don't ever want. Don't ever be afraid of that. Okay, so I just want to tighten up one or two little areas now. Just chucking a little bit of... Now what I'm going to do is dry that off and I'm going to dry it off really, really, really well. Lowry was awarded an honorary, yes, honorary Master of Arts degree by the University of Manchester in 1945 and the Doctor of Letters in 1961. In April 1955, Lowry was elected as an associate member of the Royal Academy of Arts and in 19... Um, and in April 1962, become a full Royal Academician. At the end of December of the same year, his membership status evolved to that of a senior. Having reached the age of 75, he was given the freedom of the city of Salford in 1965. And in 1975, he was awarded Honorary Doctor of Letters degree by the University of Salford, and Liverpool in 1964, the arts world celebrated his 77th birthday. This was done with an exhibition of his works and that of 25 contemporary artists who had submitted tributes at Monk's Hall Museum in Eccles. The Ale Orchestra performed a concert in his honour and Prime Minister Harold Wilson used Lowry's painting, The Pond, as his official Christmas card. Lowry's painting coming out of school was depicted on a postcard stamp, the highest denomination in the series issued by the post office depicting great British artists in 1968. Lowry twice declined an appointment to the Order of the British Empire, OBE, as an officer in 1955 and the commander, CBE, in 1961. He, was, he also turned down a knighthood in 1968 and his appointments to the Order of um, Companions of Honour in 1972 and 1976. He now holds the record for the most honours declined. Okay, what I'm going to do now, um, I hope this works. I really do hope this works. Um, I'm going to get some burnt umber by there and some red a bit of black I'm just trying to check that because I want to make it look I want a red brown a very red brown I 
and I'm going to wash my brush. I'm going to move my pot because I want to make a wash of this colour. I'm a bit browner than that. I want this to make a look like sepia type of effect. A sepia type of effect. And now I'm going to go over the entire painting with that wash like that I want my brush strokes don't mind my brush strokes being in there in fact I'm gonna just lift a little bit of paint off that Just giving it like a, a sepia wash. Just taking the excess off. I don't want it too thick. I don't want it on there too thick. Put a bit of A tiny little bit of white paint to my brush now, just to re-emphasize some clouds. Getting a bit of light in there. How's that look? It's looking pretty good, I hope. Looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. Like I said, I don't want... That is not going to be the main feature. So I'm going to dry that off again, and then I'm going to sketch something out. I'm going to sketch it out on paper, and then I'm going to trace it on there, for the simple reason is I want you to have the um, drawing, on which I'm going to post on the website under the tracings page. So... Um, I'm just going to dry that off and go and draw that out and then um, we'll see if we can't transfer it on to there somehow. <laughs> so what I've done is I've taken some of Lowry's figures from the actual print there that I made. I've just sketched out I know these are British people in an American painting but I think it would work really well quite happy with that actually there we are see can you see that there you go now what I've got to do is try and get them onto there. Um, I'm going to take a photograph of, of this. Now the reason, the other reason I've done that is because I can I can move them about. I can decide where they're going to be actually on the painting. And again these are going to be quickly painted out and, and they're going to be quite dull in fact. But I got, I've got an idea to do something there with that one. Just to set this painting off a touch. So I've got to think of a way now to Try and get them onto there without drawing them again. <laughs> Should have drew them on there and then copy them, but it doesn't matter. Okay, we'll think of a way around that one now. Okay.
Okay, so all I did basically was just, I, I did a quick outline and then I just went over it like that. I'm going to post this actually um, on the website for you. Um, there you go. So you can have a go. And if not, use those figures um, in another painting. Just, I, I do that. I just, I, I draw them like that because I got a drawer full of um, tracings and um, images like that. Just got a drawer, drawer full. And if I want something, I'll, I thought, oh, I know, I'll... I'll use that particular image and or that particular drawing. Okay, so I'm just picking up a number four detailing brush, and um, I'm just going to go through these colours. Just going to change these colours up a bit. There you go. And I just want to just follow in the same type of colours as Lowry did there. I'm going to add a bit of blue to this. I want to warm these colours up a touch. Quite dark and dismal, really, isn't he? These colours. Um, until I find the colour I'm looking for, just want to offset this. Yeah, there's that one. Oh, have I got her? I tell you what, let me put that back up there, and then I know exactly which ones I've drawn. Then there you go. And let's just put a little bit of white to that. I want us to make it look gringe, dingy and grey and there you go. Oh, and that's where have I put her, that's that one there, so let's just put a little bit of And that's what you would do. You would just paint them out like that. And just put a little bit of Shadow. There we go. That's the back of one person. Um, let's do this person here now. The black in there. Make a nice grey colour. Let's put some features in. Um, They're all quite dark and dismal. These these characters are all, all dressed dark. I don't want red. These um these characters are all dressed in dark blues, browns. Actually, blue. That's, that's a nice purple we made there. Then that's what I wanted. Actually, that looks happy accents. Just a colour, really, of Matchstick Mayan. Matchstick cats and dogs. He painted um, Salford smoky tops on cardboard boxes he bought from the shops. And parts of Anna Coates where he used to play. I'm sure he would just walk down our street. Because he painted kids who had nout on their feet. The clothes they wore had all seen the better days. Yes, like these ones. Just pick up a bit of detail. On the old face. Oh, too much black there, Clive. Now they said his works of art were dull. No room around all the walls are full. Hmm. But Lowry didn't care much anyway. They say he just paints cats and dogs and matchstick men in boots and clocks. And Lowry said, that's just the way they'll stay. I 
And he painted matchstick men and matchstick cats and dogs. He painted kids on the corner of the street. They were sparking clogs. Now he takes his brush and he waits outside them factory grates to paint his matchstick men and his matchstick cats and dogs. <laughs> he does. Now his canvas and brushes were wearing thin when London started calling him to come on down and wear the old flat cap. Because that's what they did. They had flat caps. I got a flat cap. You just may have seen me wearing that um, in my working videos. A bit of blue in there. Just oh, Molly's barking now. They said, and tell us all about your ways, and all about them Salford days. Is it true you're just an ordinary chap? And he painted his matchstick men, he matchstick cats and dogs. He painted kids on the corner of the street. They were sparking clogs. Now he takes his brush and he waits outside them factory gates. To paint his matchstick men and matchstick cats and dogs. <laughs> oh dear, dear. Now Lowry's a hang upon the wall, besides the greatest of them all, and even the Mona Lisa, she takes a bow. This tired old man with hair like snow told the northern folk it's time to go. The feather came, and the good lord mopped his brow. And he painted his matchstick men and his matchstick cats and dogs. He painted kids on the corner of the street. They were sparking clogs. Now he takes his brush and he waits outside them factory gates to paint his matchstick men and matchstick cats and dogs. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's the song. It is. Okay, so we got a we got a good thing going. <laughs> Stop singing, Clive. You're gonna put them off. We got a real good thing going. <laughs> okay, now let's, let's just concentrate on a little bit of detail on this lady here. And he painted matchstick men and matchstick cats and dogs. He painted kids on the corner. They were sparking clogs. Now he takes his brush and he waits outside them factory gates to paint his matchstick men, matchstick cats and dogs. I don't think I got a career in singing, but I got a captive audience, <laughs> so I can get away with it. Okay, so let's put a little bit of brown on this one there, like that. And this is all he did. This is all he did was just painting shapes like this and um, let's get a little bit of white there let's just change this one up a touch um, I'm going another one there so let's just and your eyes will will <laughs> make up shapes if you, you, you look at this and you're going to go yeah yeah that's that's definitely people outside a a school. I hope you this. I hope you can see this. I hope you can appreciate my hard work. <laughs> but what we're going to do now, we're going to set this off a bit, I think, because Lowry did use a little bit of a little bit of red in his painting. So let's just give this girl a little bit of a just a. Start the head off. There we go, like that. Let's get the shape first. She had a nice black skirt on. So let's give her a nice black skirt. And watch. I'm looking at Lowry's painting for this one. And let's just put a. Yeah. 
Bit of red. I told you that I want to make a statement or put an eye into a painting, and in this situation, is that's why he used red, is because he was painting such a a solemn place at the time it was really solemn and if we put if we put a little scarf on that one as well like that in red because Salford there in 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 those days um, you know is industrial and there wasn't much money going about and there was poverty and everybody was poverty stricken and things and a little bit of thing. So your eye now is going to be drawn to that red jumper or dress or whatever it is, sh cloak or whatever, and your eye is going to be pulled into this area, and that's going to set the painting off because it's such a dark, dismal, dirty-looking um, painting, and it's it's meant to represent those dark times of when this school hall or s school building was was um, there and what I want to try trying to do with this one is always the easy simple very simple type of basic brush strokes and imagery um, I just wanted to show you that, it, that you don't have to always be there and get everything accurate and perfect all you really do need to do like Lowry did in his paintings is to create a feeling of 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 empathy for these people and and that it's just a feeling that's all you're trying to do is generate a, an emotion generate a feeling from uh, this style of painting this is the style of painting that i like to do um, i've done it several times um, it's just a very quick simple easy um, block outs and just make it making something look Making something look, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Emotional. You look at those people and you, you, you feel for them. You're thinking, yeah, they, 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 they haven't got a lot of money. Um, they go into school and it's, it's just a nice way of trying to represent a fantastic challenge by Larry Hamilton, which I want to thank you for, Larry, because you've definitely opened my eyes up on this one. And, and I hope this has come across like an old type of sepia photograph, an old painting that's been hanging on the wall for a hundred years that looks worn, tattered, tattered, and, and something that's just gone through those hanging on the wall, people smoking. It's most probably in a public house somewhere. Um, I wanted it to look like that. I wanted it to look like an old sepia photograph, something like Lowry used to do. It's just paint, painting atmosphere rather than subject matter. So all I want to do today is thank you very much for that challenge, Larry. And um, please check out Brandon's, um, Brandon Schaefer, the Schaefer Art. Please check out his uh, um, video, which is going to be in there. Jason Bowen as well. He's going to be doing this. So, um, and Larry Hamilton as well, who was the challenger um, this time. And um, I just wanted to create mood and atmosphere um, and not detail. So I hope I've managed to achieve that for you. Um, and if I have, please leave a comment in the comment box below. Um, if I haven't, please leave a comment in the comment box below. Thumbs up, thumbs down. I just want to know exactly what you feel about this and whether you could take on this challenge. So don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Please subscribe to my channel. That's very important. The tracing is going to be up on the um, web page, which is www.5art.co.uk tracings. If you want to keep that, download it and do whatever you want to, with that. Have a go at this challenge. The picture is going to be there as well. So until next time, thank you for joining me in the studio today. Have a good, good day, good week, a good month, a good year. As I don't know exactly when you're going to be watching this, please like, comment and subscribe. Please leave comments in the comment box. And God bless and I'll see you next time. Noise.
So let's just take you on a little browse through my web page. As you can see, there's a number of pages there. We'll go into one or two of them in just a second, but let's have a look at the shop. Okay, um, down here are all my products that are available. As you can see, there's Flow Improve, Approver, Medium Mix, um, there's some paint thickeners, etc., 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 and these are all in pounds sterling. Um, if you want to convert that to your uh, currency, then just click there. You can see the way the arrow moves into a little finger, and that's the currency convert there. So just to click on that, and that'll tell you what these prices are going to be in euros or dollars, etc. And they're all set up in tabs. So if you wanted to have a look what brush ranges I've got, etc., then just click on brushes and that will bring up the brush tabs. Also, uh, very quickly, um, there is a um, free images to trace. So if you want to click on uh, that tab, so if there's any lessons that you've been following and you want the tracings, then all you need to do is go down and find the one you want. And let's have a little look at Billy Rabbit. Right, right click, right click and save the image as to your PC. There we go and that works for every single one so right click and save the image as there you go and that's that